Okay, John 6. Let's turn in our Bibles for those of you who have them. And guys, I'm, I don't know what you have for on the screen uh, because I pretty much put almost the whole chapter of John 6 on my notes. But I want to set the stage for you because Jesus comes and he, he's just started his ministry and he's beginning to tell pe people throughout the land about him and who he is. And so the message that they have received before under the old covenant, the old ways of, of God, are about to change. And so people are going to be confronted and affronted with the word of God. And so I'll get you up to speed with what's going on here and then we'll read about the events that happen in chapter 6. What's going on is Jesus has just launched, launched his ministry. He's got his disciples picked. He's got his mes message put together. He's already called. He's got dates to speak throughout the Holy Land. And I mean, he's going on tour. And so they set out and they're on tour. And Jesus is doing some amazing things. I mean, the lame are walking. And you've got to understand, in these villages, in these areas, and cities, and regions, pretty much everybody knows everybody. There's a history there. They communicate. They spend time talking. They don't have internet and TV and all that. So they did that relating thing. They had personal relationships. They really knew their neighbors and things like that. So people really know who each other are. So they're coming out to these meetings to hear Jesus, and they're beginning to see things that are going on in people's lives that they know. And they're like, wow, that happened in Brian's life? Well, man, I know Brian. He, I knew when he was born. I saw him, the, you know what I'm saying? So, so Jesus is doing all these incredible things, and these people are getting excited. It's the best thing that has happened since Vegas. I'm telling you, this is the best show Vegas has ever seen. They've never seen all these demons being cast out. They have not seen a boy raised from the dead. They've not seen these types of things. They've never seen the actual demonstration of the Spirit of God in this way. Yeah, Moses threw down the rod. He led the children of Israel out of Egypt. There was some signs and wonders and things that God always did. The burning bush. I mean, lots of things. And, but this was different. He was here now on this earth in the flesh. He was doing a new thing, a new way, because there was a new message. Okay? And it was about ready to confront these people. I mean, Jesus is walking on water. I mean, I don't even think Chris Angel or whoever that guy, he's really done that kind of stuff. But all these cool things are going on. The entertainment is amazing, and people are starting. The fame of Jesus is going throughout the land, and people are flocking to his meetings. He even fed 5,000 at one time with just a little bit of bread and fish. I mean, these things are amazing. And back then, uh, huh? Fish sticks, that's right, absolutely. Stolen from a little boy, I mean... But he got to take more home. Anyways, so this stuff is going great. So not only are they being entertained with some of the best entertainment going on, they're getting free food. I mean, they didn't have to pay to come. They didn't have to pay anything. They, it was just free. And I mean, this is like awesome. They couldn't believe this. So what more could you want? Okay? And you've got to understand that this was so spectacular. And we'll pick it up actually then, I think, in verse 15. I'll touch on this. It says in John 6, 15, it says, When the people saw him do this mira these miraculous signs, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we've been expecting. So you've got to understand the teaching of the day. They were expecting a prophet to return, the Messiah to come. So they, they knew that a Messiah was coming, and they had heard stories, but they weren't really sure. So could this be it? So when they saw Jesus... So when Jesus saw, okay, let me see, back up. They exclaimed, okay, surely he is the prophet we've been expecting. And when Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away to the hills to be by himself. I mean, that was so awesome. They were ready to force him to be their king. They were like, man, this is who we want leading us. We want all this because he's providing all this stuff for us. We don't have to do a thing. Okay, so let's pick the story up. In verse 26, Jesus, okay, so they go. They're ready to make him king. Jesus disappears. The disciples go across the lake to Capernaum, and they're getting ready for the last stop of this tour. 
And Jesus is realizing that these people, they're actually so focused on what they've thought and it got him so boxed in because they saw that they knew that and heard stories of the Messiah coming. They knew the works of Moses in the desert and all these things. So they had a preconceived idea of what was going to happen here. And they had it all planned out and it was going to be pretty cool. And Jedediah even touched on this. And if you weren't here last week for either message, get the CDs. They were phenomenal. Jedediah touched on some of these little things in different parts of scripture and, and a totally different thing, but it's the same thing at work here. People had Jesus put in a box. They had a preconceived idea of who he was and what he was going to do when he came and how great it was going to be for them because he was going to set up a kingdom and everybody was going to get rich and famous and man, this is going to be great and we're just going to live like this forever, right? Okay, so Jesus goes across. They all end up in Capernaum. And then uh, the people wake up the next morning. They realize that Jesus and the disciples are gone. So they know where the, he's going. So they head there. And this is what uh, Jesus says uh, to them. Because they, they see him. They find him. And they're like, well, hey, when did you get here? You know, kind of like hanging out. Nothing's wrong. They got it all together because they've got it figured out. And Jesus replied to them, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. I mean, whoa, Jesus is starting to get really serious in a hurry here. He's realizing that these people are not going to get it, and I've got to reveal to them and get through to them what I'm really about and what I'm here for. He says, I tell you the truth, it's not, uh, but don't be so concerned about perishable food, but spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. They replied, we want to perform the miracles of, uh, the, and the works of God too, what should we do? Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you, is to believe in the one who sent you. Now, for the sake of time, because I was going to read through this and show just the dissertation back and forth and stuff, and then how they started murmuring and complaining against him, because Jesus started, I mean, he was just saying it like it was. He started confronting what was in their heart. And see, that's what the word does. It goes in our heart. It gets in our face and it goes in and it starts cutting away and dividing between those things that are right and true and those things that are not right and true. And so these things became hard for them. And the very people, the crowd, that really what they wanted, they wanted the manna like Moses gave the people in the wilderness. They wanted that. They wanted somebody just to give them something. And you know what? And it says in this whole dissertation here until the end of the chapter that uh, they wanted to uh, live in the miracles. They, I mean, come on. Living in 40 years every day with miracles all around you and partaking of the miracles of God, that'd be pretty awesome, wouldn't it? But guess what happened to those people? They died with miracles happening every day in their life. Why? Because they, they, they didn't get it. They murmured. They complained. They never were able to enter into the promised land. It wasn't about the miracles. It was what was going on in their heart. And so Jesus, he's like, they don't get it. And all they want is they want that old thing. And if you were at prayer last night, we talked about the manna and stuff. And I was like, Linda's all up in my message. <laughs> but she brought out a different aspect than what I was going to bring out today. Because the manna, it's just the old way. It's the old word. Saying it in today's uh, uh, terminology is you're not going to be able to live and survive on your grandma's revelation. Right. You're not going to be able to live and survive on what your mom and dad taught you. If you don't get into this da word daily for yourself and you try to partake of old things and things of the past, even what God told you last year, I hope to God that you're still not trying to live off of that word. Now, I will say this. The only way that you should be uh, living off of that word and doing that word is if you haven't been obedient to it. I know. That's what I said. I was like, ouch, God. Because God kind of reminded me of that. See, when he speaks things to us, it's for a reason. And then when we don't obey God's word, because obedience activates faith and obedience activates the word of God in our life. When we don't activate it in our life, it doesn't do anything. And then here we are a year later and we're wondering, God, where are you? Why are these things going on in my life? 
and we get mad and we begin to murmur and complain like these people did in John 6. And guess what happened to the crowd? These people in John 6, they got so mad at Jesus, the very crowd that was wanting to make him king, they turned around and they walked away from him. Yeah. 